we're going to December of 2014. Um, you you signed for Dundee. You went on record as saying it was um, it was it was something special. Was it the, the break you needed at the time, Christian? To be honest, just before to sign up uh, for Dundee, I was about to stop football. Uh, I already gave up. I went to France. I was at home, mm -hmm. and someone um, someone for me called Alec Hamilton phoned me and says, and I shouldn't. I shouldn't stop and I've got the talent and I can still play and I need to come back. And and he told me that um, there is a team who want, who want me on trial. And it was, that was Dundee. And I say, I haven't played for a year almost because I had a near surgery. I just che I checked Dundee at the top of the league. I said, it's no chance I'm going to make it. Maybe if I was fit, but I'm not. And I went on trial and, and he convinced me and I came back and I went on trial. And, and I remember we trained and after every training session, my knee would just swell up. Like it was crazy. I, ne I never, like I've never trained for a year. I just come back from an injury, never touched the ball. My knee was completely destroyed. And I said, it's not gonna work. So after every training session, I would like take painkillers, painkillers, just to be able to deal with the pain. And, uh, but I, I've done quite well. And the coach gave me a contract, but he said, oh, I want to do, a, we had, a, how you call this? We had um, a small test, fitness test. Mm -hmm. And and I was rubbish because obviously I couldn't keep on. And he, so he withdrew the offer and said, well, I want to see you in a game. So we do a friendly game. And I think I scored a goal after five minutes. And then I scored a goal two minutes after that. And then I give an assist, an assist and he said, okay, we give you a contract. But I, was, I wasn't ready at all. So was there a lot of pressure then going into that game, thinking that you've got the opportunity to win a contract based on this on this friendly? Of course, of course, it was like you know when you like this, you start to there's every possibility you go into your head. Is does the player going to pass me the ball? Is the um, am I going to touch the ball? Am I going to do the right things? Um, and you know, and that day was just my day. Everything went for me. Safe to say that uh, everything happens for a reason then. Because after all, you talk about this knee injury. I think was that not your obstacle in signing for East Fife the previous summer? I haven't signed for East Fife, but that's the reason why I came back in Scotland yet yeah, because of my knee. And yes, yeah. I'm, I'm a I'm a believer. I know that everything happened for a reason because it's just too weird. It's just the way the way I, I hurt my knee. I don't know how anybody can hurt the knee the way I did. Do you remember what it was you did, Uni? Like how how it happened? Yes. Oh, yes. It was crazy. I was alone. I just received the ball. Someone passed me the ball. I stopped the ball. And I thought, oh, my knee. And that was me down. It's so just the touch that, on the ball. Just like that. And it wasn't even the, to the ball that I touched the ball with. I controlled the ball with my right foot and it's my left leg. And it was like, I'm playing with you and we pass the ball to each other. And I said, oh, my knee. That's what happened. So something that should be so minimal turned out to be such a major... I don't even know how you can be injured that way. <laughs> and then other things, I went to the doctor and the doctor in turn to me, I've got nothing at all. Then I should be playing soon. But after a month, I couldn't walk. So I went to, I came back in Scotland to see a doctor and the doctor, we had an uh, X-ray and he said, if I don't get the surgery soon, I won't be able to play football ever again. Just for something, I don't, I don't understand how this happened. And then um, I had to break my contract. Well, they wanted me back. They wanted to do surgery. I, I declined. I said, I'm going to pay for my own surgery here, which I did. And, uh, and I said, I told them that I need seven months till I can play again. And uh, they wanted me back there. I said, I'm not going to be there for seven months doing nothing. So I'm going to stay here. And I would like to, to stop my contract, which I, and I did. Well, you said that when you came to Dundee, though, you didn't feel like you were ready because of the knee injury. Obviously, taking painkillers, playing the friendly game. I think Craig Beatty and Peter McDonald were both injured at the time when you signed. So yes. despite yeah, so despite this injury, were you sitting there thinking like, you know, I might not be ready, but I could still be jumping straight into the first team here? I was honestly because they were not ready. I was so so scared. I remember the first game I was seeing was uh, against Falkirk mm -hmm. and away on the Astro, and I'm like, how oh, I'm gonna make this? And it was, and I think the coach sister to me after. Uh, 45 minutes or 50 because I could I just couldn't when I wasn't fit and my knee was was killing me mm -hmm. so yes I, was, I wasn't a good way to start 
No, that was uh, John Brown would have been the manager that signed you then. Yeah. Yeah. How did you find him then to begin with? If you come in unfit, uh, struggling, was he quite sympathetic to that or was he a bit more? He never knew. He never knew. No, I never told anybody. They wouldn't have signed me. They knew that I couldn't run. And then my knee was too sore. So I never told anybody. Oh, so I managed to go through the pain and keep it under the rug completely. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So when you when you looked at Dundee, top the league, was that what made the prospect of coming Dundee uh, attractive to you? Or was it maybe just the, the idea of returning to Scotland? No, like I said, the fact they were top of the league made it even harder for me to come back. Because I wanted to stop. But I said, no chance. I don't want to go and humiliate myself and play for a team where at top of the league, I can't run, I can't uh, bring something. So the only things I could bring to, to Dundee is just to make them lose their first place. You know, they're already top of the league. They can't go higher than top of the league. So if I come and it doesn't work and they turn second, it's going to be only because of me because I will be the only added pieces to the team. So I had this extra pressure. So no, it, it was just to come back to football and, and because he went, uh, the, the coach, I remember he came to me and said, Christian, I don't need you to run everywhere. I don't need you to do those runs. I only need you to be in the box. Your presence in the box will be enough for us. So I just need you to be in the box. And that's when I felt like he don't expect me to come and hold the ball and run there and do those runs. He just want me in the box. And he make, I felt so, so much better after he spoke to me. So when you, when you joined that Dundee team as well, as we said, top the league it obviously goes on to win the championship title. Um, how did you how did you find the team both in, on a playing level and in terms of the togetherness of the group? Did, could you tell right away that it, it was a potential title winning team? Well, we're at top of the league, so <laughs> yes. Oh. But honestly, I, the way we were playing, we were strong everywhere. We were strong in defense, quite easy actually in defense. Our midfielder was like dogs; they could run forever. And we knew, and uh, when you've got a striker like Peter McDonald. And Craig BT, when he's fit, who can run, he can score from nothing. You've got a big shot there. Well, I've actually got both shirts you would have played in in uh, your Dundee career, Chris, you're right behind me on the, the two Americans <laughs> league winning campaign. Uh, do you have this... a favourite shirt between the two? I like the dark one. Dark one? Yeah. Home gets your favourite over the, the light one? Yeah, I prefer the dark one, yeah. But is that a shot? It was when we played that year? Yeah, this was the championship winning shot. Okay. Yeah, but I prefer this one definitely, yeah. I would like to go on a bit of a breakdown for the, the last three games of the season. Uh, myself being a, a Dundee fan, I can remember the, the roller coaster uh, that, that followed. Um, there was Morton away. Greenock Morton at this point had already been uh, relegated. And the Dougie Emery goal saw Morton win the game 1-0. Uh, and with two games left to go, Hamilton were top the league. Yeah. So, do you remember that well? Do you remember thinking that perhaps you know, because it's out of our hands that uh, the chance was gone, it was blown, or what was the what was the mood in the camp? No, I remember I was in the, I was in the, when we were playing Morton, and we, I was in the bench, and I told people, "Why are you worrying? We're going to we're going to win the league," and they were like, "Come on, uh, Dumba Hamilton," and you can ask any player who are on the bench, they will tell you the same thing. They say. Uh, Hamilton is first of the league. No way they're gonna they're gonna um, give us the, the league. I said, I'm telling you, we're going to win the league. There's no way we can lose it. Even with Singen, we win the league. And they said, no, no, no. <laughs> I remember because it's um, the Karen, which was the the physio, say Christian, you must be a witch doctor. And I said, I'm not a witch doctor. I'm telling you, we're going to win the league. And we ended up winning the league. I see you right I, then. Yeah, I just I just knew it. I actually just knew it. Was that so? The mood in the camp then after that defeat, did they feel it was blown, and you were the one that just had the belief that it was just bound to happen? I don't know if it was blown, but for me, I did, I didn't have any doubt, and we win the league. Uh -huh. I knew some people were thinking, "Oh, it's going to be difficult." I mean, but I said to my, I told them, "Don't even worry." And I remember I used to come in training and and laugh and say, "Why are you so happy?" I, said, I know we're going to win the league. Just relax. So we're going to the second last game of the season, uh, away to Alloa. You scored the opening goal that day, but you weren't able to celebrate. If, if memory serves correct, you actually were injured from a collision of heads. So yeah. do you remember it final well, or was it too big of a knock in the head? 
No, no, no. At the time, I couldn't remember. I just remember I was a ball because I remember then Peter uh, Pizzo was saying that he's the one scoring. And I said, look, man, just go away. I scored the goal. Uh, but yes, I think, I don't know who kicked me. I don't know if it's the goalkeeper or someone. I don't remember exactly. I just remember scoring and uh, being on the floor. Mm-hmm. That's all. And then, uh, and I think we won 3-1, that game of 3-0. 3-0, yeah. Um, I think there's a cross and I headed the ball and he touched the hand of his centre-back and there was a penalty. And uh, Craig Beatty scored the penalty. Yeah. I think it was Peter McDonald scored the penalty, and then yeah. Craig Beatty finished finished the game off with uh, a third goal. Mm-hmm. And the game against Dumbarton. What was the build up for that game like? Then did did you guys anticipate such a, a mass crowd for a for a season finale? Yeah, of course, because the police came in the dressing room and told us, and if we score, we can't celebrate with the fans. We need to stay onto the pitch. Um, I remember when we went for the warm up, nobody was talking. Usually everybody's laughing, nobody was talking. You could feel the pressure. And I told the players, hey guys, it's just a game. Just relax. You're going to win. Just have fun. Just laugh. And I started to laugh. And, and the, the um, what's his name? Tom Ritchie said, Christian, shut up. We have everybody's, everybody's concentrated and everybody's focused. See, stop with this focus. Just have fun. If you play with, if you go with so much pressure, we weren't going to make it. So just have fun, guys. And every, I think we played amazingly. It was a cup final scenario, really. It had to be a, a must-win game to ensure the, the title. And we know that in hindsight, anyway, because uh, Hamilton had their colossal victory against uh, Morton. But, you know, we go into the, the game. There's an early lead. Uh, you score a header. Wild celebrations. Uh, we go into halftime with a comfortable lead because Pete McDonald scores the second. The, the second half wasn't so smooth sailing, though, as it should have been. So do you remember feeling any pressure in that sec- second half? What I'm trying to say is, what, do you know about the Hamilton result after you came off? Or did you feel the pressure on the pitch, knowing I the Hamilton it, result? So what happened is, I had this thing with Craig Beatty. So I wanted Craig Beatty to play. So a few times when I was playing, I would pretend to be tired so Craig Beatty could play. So when we are winning, and I say, OK, we've got the game, I'm gonna let Craig Beatty play. So I came off the beach and then I realized and they are trashing, trashing uh, Hamilton. And I was like, oh, that's gonna be tough. Mm-hmm. But we managed to uh, to win. But yes, the pressure in second half was, was crazy. Yeah, what's your memories then of that header scoring the wild celebrations? Where I want to know, where does that goal rank from the goals you've scored in your career? Best goal. I told them, yes, um, um, the goal against Arsenal was amazing. It's a big team. And, but this is uh, something like I can't describe. The, the, the joys that I managed to, to give to other people and to me and my teammates, it was just amazing. And actually, I don't even know why I run towards the bench. <laughs> <laughs> just be me because unconsciously I know the police told us not to do it, to go towards the fan. But if you ask me today to do the same, I will run towards the fan. <laughs> oh, yeah, I will run <laughs> into the stand, 100%. Yeah, you had quite a special relationship uh, with the fans. Uh, you've went on record as saying that you've never felt anything like this before, that you love you love the fans, the pitch, and just being at Dundee. Is it fair to say that you, you somewhat fell in love with the club? Oh, yeah, 100%. I, ne- I felt so good over there. I was happy. I felt the love from the fans, and I, I'm sure they felt the love uh, that I could give as well. Um, yes, I was happy there. I was actually about to to move there. You're getting ready to move properly? In the, in the year. Yeah. And lifting the championship trophy on that final day against the Barton. In your, in your career, how high does that rank? Oh, top. That's the top? But the only league that I won, so yes, of course, I'm top, yeah. So you're very proud of that uh, achievement, no doubt. Yes, you know you you pr- you are you're part of something. I'm part of of the history. So yes, of course I'm happy. Well, I know the fans would have been very keen for you to stay. Yourself would have been keen to say. Ultimately, um, the decision was made. It wasn't made by me. It wasn't made by you, no. <laughs> then I went to a city hall and I saw the the, um, the fitness coach and I saw something on his face like he wasn't the way he used to be towards me. And I'm like, is that something wrong? You say, no, no, nothing wrong, Christian. Just go.
and I felt something. So we done the city hall and everything, but this keep playing in my head, in my head the way it was. And when we came back and then when the coach told me, I was like, wow. And when I went back to uh, to the car with the boys, uh, Benedict said, oh, Christian, you've been offered, I'm sure you've been offered a big contract. You must be so happy. I said, no, I'm released. He said, no, Chen, stop, stop pretending. You know, I'm being serious. I've been released. He said, everybody can be released, but you, I said, I'm telling you, I've been released. Uh, looking back on leaving Dundee, do you see it more as a positive than a negative now? Like, I, do you feel happy that, all right, well, you left playing your part, leaving a legacy, playing a part in a, uh, a crucial point in the club's history? Or do you look at it a bit still, a bit better that I couldn't go on longer than it did? No, of course I, I, I was better. Of course, because, you know, I, I, I felt like I didn't finish what I started. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, we won the league, but after, you know, the, the thing is, is confirmed what you achieved the season before. So going in Premiership and just stay up. And and obviously everybody wants to play in Premiership. So yes, of course I was, I was gutted because I, I actually gave everything I had. I gave my soul. Like after, and you can ask any player, before every training session, I was in the gym just to, to get, and after training session as well, mm-hmm. every day, just because I wanted to, uh, to, to get better for the team, for the club, for the fans, for the players. And, and be taking this this um, opportunity for me, it was quite, it was difficult and I'm not going to lie. At some point, I said, if that's football, I want to stop again. Because I give my my, my, my whole and it's not enough. I want, I, I love hearts and I love playing for hearts. But the thing I felt in Dundee was something different and I wish I could have played much longer than this. Mm-hmm.